Welcome again to part 3 of Making 3D Product Animation. In this tutorial, we will add light and create an animation. Let's get started. First, let's prepare the scene. Add a plane to act as the floor for the can. Press Shift plus D to duplicate the plane. Then rotate it and place it behind the can to use it as a backdrop. Let's go to the Shading tab and start adding material for the floor and backdrop. I will change the render engine from EVE to Cycles. With the floor selected, add new material. I will bring down the color to complete black. Increase the metallic value to 1. Reduce the roughness to something like 0.1. Select the backdrop. Then add the new material. I will change the color to blue, then change it to be a dark blue. Also, increase roughness and metallic to 1. Now, let's switch to the animation window and start adding light and animation. As you can see, the scene is completely dark in render mode. Let's start by adding an area light, positioning it and scaling it above the can. Increase the power to 40. Now we can see the light on the top side of the can. Let's add more light to increase visibility on the can. Here I will use plane instead of area light in order to add gradient and remove the sharp edge of the light. Just add a plane, then rotate and position it on this side. I will change this window to shading and with the plane selected, add new material. Remove principal BSDF, then takes the surface output and plugs it into the emission shader. Now let's add a gradient texture to the light. Take the color of the emission shader, then plug it into the color ramp. With the color ramp selected, press Ctrl plus T to add texture coordinates. I will remove this image texture. Now we see, we have the gradient texture in the emission shader. You can adjust the brightness and darkness by moving this color stop. Just rotate the gradient texture along the z-axis to have a straight gradient, then move it along the y-axis to be at the beginning of the plane. I will change the strength of the emission shader to 10. Now you can play with the color ramp by adding a color stop and changing the value to have a nice looking gradient. As you can see, we have this nice gradient light that reflects on the can. Just duplicate the plane and position it on this side to add more light to our scene. Now it's starting to look great, but let's add the front light. I will duplicate this area light, then move in front of the can and rotate a little bit to something like this. Play with different power values until you find the one that fits your scene. I will continue to adjust the distance and position of the light to give the can a more realistic look. Now, add another light at the back of the can. I will use a point light and place it at the back of the can. I will increase the power size to 20 and the radius to something like 1.6. Now it looks pretty nice. Now that we have already set up the scene light, it is a good time to add the camera. Press Shift plus A, add camera, and with camera selected, press and hold Control, Alt plus numpad 0 to position the camera in the current view. Press N, and in the view section, just check for the lock camera to view. Position the camera at the angle you prefer. Now let's go into the camera settings to change a few things. Change the focal length to 30 millimeters. Change the passpart to to 1. Just continue to adjust the light position and rotation to make sure that they are not shown in the camera view. Now let's start creating different shots for the animation. I will reduce the timeline frame to 60. For this shot, add an empty axis and position it to be in the center of the can. Select the can, then press Ctrl plus P to set parent to the empty axis. Now you can see that when I move empty, it can also move. I will create a rotation of the cans. 
With the empty selected, make sure you are in the first frame, press I, and add a rotation keyframe. Go to the end frame. Rotate the empty a little bit to something like this, then press I again and insert the rotation keyframe. When you play the animation like this, we need to change the animation to linear to have a constant speed at the start and at the end. Press your cursor in the timeline, then press T to set linear keyframe interpolation. Now let's animate the camera. I will position the camera here. I will go again in the first frame, then add a location and rotation keyframe. Go again to the end frame, bring down the camera a little bit and add the keyframe. Set a linear keyframe interpolation for the camera. Now, when you play, the result will look like this. I will increase the darkness of the backdrop a little bit. Also, you can add depth of field to add focus to the object. For the second shot, I will use the same rotation of the can, but I will delete the keyframe of the camera and position it in another location. From here, I will repeat the same procedures for adding a keyframe to the camera. And adjust the light position to have a nice look. In this third shot, I will duplicate the can and position to be aligned so I can get them aligned at a 45 degree angle. You can use the array modifier to do this, but I will duplicate it individually. Now let's position the camera to have it at an angle like this. I will continue to adjust the position of the cans by bringing them close to each other. After finishing setting the camera to your preferred angle, press I, then insert the location and rotation keyframe. I will change the timeline frame to 100. Go to the end frame, move the camera back, then add the keyframe again. Just change the keyframe interpolation to linear. Now let's duplicate the cans and place them behind to fill some gaps. Just change the positions to be offset from each other. Now you see that it looks much better. Let's add focus to add more realism to the animation. Add an empty place to the can where we want the camera to start focusing. Add a location keyframe to the empty, then move the empty to where the camera ends. Add another location keyframe. Just make sure it is visible to the camera so we can have smooth focus on the can. Now, to see the depth field in the viewport, make sure you enable it here by checking the box. Go to the camera setting in the depth field and select the focus object to be the empty that we have animated. You can change the f-stop to increase how the focus appears in the scene. Now that it looks great, I will continue to change the position of the light and increase its power to add more light to the scene. I will finish by changing the rotation of the can to be random to add more realism to the shot. In the other shot, I have the same procedures, but it will depend on the idea and plan of your shot. The output of the animation I've used Cycle Render. You can change the device to a GPU computer if you have one, or if you don't have a GPU, use a CPU. 
For the render max samples, I set it to 100. Enable motion blur. Another thing that I have changed is color management. Change the look to high contrast. Just select the render output folder. Then press Ctrl plus F12 to render animation or you can come here in the render menu. Now you can add color grading and adjust the speed of the animation to add more realism to the animation. And that is the final part of the tutorial on making your first 3D product animation. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned something. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.